Hello, I am Femi O.K., your moderator for the next one hour. I'm so glad you're spending the one hour with us here at the World Food Programme USA. If you think about it, how many resources we have around the world, nobody, absolutely nobody should be hungry right now. For 60 years, the UN World Food Programme has worked to repair, sustain, and improve food systems for the world's most at-risk people. It's so essential that we transform our food systems to become sustainable while also maintaining a strong global food supply chain. Whenever I use the phrase food systems, I'm, I'm talking to development people, people in the development field, having a conversation about development. But whether you use that phrase regularly or not, we are surrounded by food systems. Let's take a closer look at how they impact all of us. start with this idea we wouldn't all be here chatting if there wasn't an issue with our food system. Obviously we need equitable uh, food systems and I believe we all agree on this panel uh, that there should not be a hungry person uh, in the world because we have the skill technologically to fix that. We can move food around, we can feed people do we need to work on distribution systems? Absolutely. Do we need to make sure that economic development, micro farming, home farming, I mean, there's a there's a hundred different smaller issues. However, none of them are going to work if we don't address our global climate crisis. So I think that's the, that's the most important thing. You don't have the choice what crisis you want to address. There's a soil crisis. We are losing arable land at a breathtaking speed. There's a biodiversity crisis in which we are killing more animals, more species every day um, that, you know, possibly can be sustained. We have a climate crisis all over us and we have inequality and hunger and poverty. We need to fix all of these things together. And that is absolutely doable and, and i think the magic can really happen on a local level because there the connections are there you can build it or rebuild it you can activate communities and the beauty of food is it's such an emotional topic it's a connector it's a combiner it's something people feel strongly about we need to match the challenges of climate change with the challenge of restoring broken landscapes of fixing livelihoods that are so intricately linked to landscapes and landscapes, soil, uh, biomass, uh, living things, and people are so connected, right? Get green diets, green minds, green businesses. We need to get there and get fast. But you know, 60% of the population being below 25, that energy is unique. I'm talking about Sub-Saharan Africa here. It's for the world. It it's, uh, it's a recipe for, for everyone. I am all for ugly food. I, I don't believe we need to be buying pristine food uh, from Western markets. Uh, I believe in the power of eating ugly food. Uh, often it tastes better and most of the food grown in the world is ugly. Um, it, it's fascinating to listen to my colleagues 
uh, talk about uh, the same issues using different languages and it all coming down to micro communities. We don't need you know, one global leader, one global solution. This is a system that requires 14, 15 different solutions. And the only way to do that is community by community by community. So it doesn't matter what business, what food product, or where in the world, we are seeing a class issue develop where those can afford to eat, can eat, because they can cope with the rising cost of food. And it becomes more and more expensive to feed the hungry. One potential solution to help improve our food systems, make them more equitable, and that is the WFP Stop the Waste campaign. It's really simple. Let's take a look. You can do it safely from your computer and help spread the message and start to be an advocate for change. If we don't make those small changes community by community, starting in places like our supermarkets and with our municipal and statewide laws about food waste, we are going to be stuck in the same position that we're in a year, two years, three years from now. And that is absolutely petrifying to me. Having dialogues, having at least three or four key activities that relieves hardships you can't believe the amount of hardships particularly on the shoulders of women people tend to forget these two big categories youth and women okay they they, they are the the pillars of our food system and that action is different in madagascar than it is in munich totally than it is in milan totally than it is in minnesota and that's why the community-based organizations and listening to the people that live there is going to help improve uh, those things we need to look at our farmers not only as food producers. We need to look at them as the people who are basically managing our life support system. And if you were in the International Space Station and somebody would fiddle with the water filtration system or with the oxygen, the CO2 shrubbing, and I think we are still believing that we can do whatever we want to this planet and somehow miraculously it will continue to function while all the scientists really scream at us in unison that this is now code red for humanity and that it's really five years left and that is it. You know, like teachers and first responders, our, our farmers globally are our livelihood. We need to be supporting them. That's where the money needs to go. We shouldn't be taking from them and pushing them down. We need to be elevating them and listening to what they have to say. People may be surprised that WFP is taking you know, quite a close look at this, but we belong to those contexts, right? Because we are there. So we see those opportunities. And when we don't have the skills, we call for somebody else to help us. So there are, you know, we need more partnerships. We need more actionable partnership and partnership that actually go down there, you know, and stay. You know, it's to, to really to rehabilitate, to restore, to replenish and to replicate. Now, if you go to a big coffee chain and you buy some fancy coffee, let's say for $4, the producer typically gets three cents. Well, if you give the producer six cents, that still makes it a $4 cappuccino. You don't even feel that as a consumer. But these three cents mean a doubling of the income of the farmer. And that can mean that the daughter can go to school and to university and all the chain. So you can still be in business and you can still make good business without killing people on the other side of the value chain. Cook for your friends. Don't eat alone. Invite people. Take time and love to prepare because it connects you. It's good for your health. It's good for your mental health. And it's good for the planet. And it's just a very, very human thing to do. I think the one thing that I would add is we have to be awareness raisers and advocates in our community. 
I was thrilled to hear everybody applauded what Martin had to say. I want everyone who's passionate about those issues to spread the word that there's fair trade, not just in coffee, but in a whole list of thousands of ingredients around the world, from olive oil to asparagus to plums from Chile and Paraguay. So I would encourage people to spread the news to everyone they can and encourage all of their community to be an advocate for change. Andrew, Martin, Rolly, I have just experienced the best hour of this week and I've had a pretty exciting week. Thank you so much for your time, for being part of this WFP USA virtual conversation series. Really appreciate you. Thanks for spending an hour with the WFP USA. Take care, everybody. See you next time.